The AP exam will rarely ask you to work with vectors directly, but it is important to understand what a vector is so that you understand how to work with its components, which will primarily be the way that we'll work with vectors. A vector is a mathematical object just like a number, a function, or a matrix. In physics, we often refer to numbers as scalars. And a scalar only has magnitude. A vector is different. A vector has both magnitude and direction. And it's precisely that direction that's so useful when you're trying to solve problems. So when we write down vectors, we either write them down, as you can see here, in boldface or using the vector symbol. In this case, these vectors R, V, and A were typed up using both boldface and vectors. But primarily when I write them, I'll write them with the vector symbol on top. But since we're only primarily going to see vectors in this chapter, you won't really see this notation that often. In order to draw a vector pictorially, we draw them as arrows. In this case, you can see vector A, and you can see vector B. And since these objects have magnitude and direction, it's important to understand how that shows up in the picture of them. It should be pretty clear that the magnitude of the vector is represented by the length of its arrow. We denote that magnitude by the symbol that looks like the absolute value symbol, but for vectors, it really represents its magnitude. The direction of the vector is represented by the arrow's direction. In a problem, it would probably be further specified by giving it as an angle relative to some known axis. Usually, that's either an angle relative to the horizontal axis or an angle relative to the vertical. We can add vectors just like other mathematical objects. Pictorially, we can add them by combining them head to tail. So if we have A as drawn here, and we have B as drawn here, and we want to add them together, A plus B to form some vector C, well, we just draw A, and then we draw B with the tail of B leaving from the head of A, and then C is simply the vector that spans from the tail of A to the head of B, as you can see here. Now primarily when we work with vectors, we're going to be working with the vector components. So what are vector components? Well, they're two perpendicular vectors that add together to yield our original vector. When we write out these components, we'll denote them using subscripts. So for the vector A, it would be A sub X and A sub Y. And as you can see in this formula here, we can find the components of a vector, both its x and y components, using the original magnitude as well as the direction given as an angle. In this case, theta represents the angle, and we see the magnitude symbol. So what does this look like in a picture? Well, if we look here and we draw some sort of two-dimensional space, in this case spanned by these x and y axes, and we represent our vector A by this arrow, then the x component of A is simply how far in the horizontal direction A travels, and the y component is simply how far in the vertical direction the vector travels. And so what we've really drawn here is a triangle, and if we mark one of the angles of that triangle by theta, then we really see how all these things are connected the component formulas are really just a matter of applying the geometry and trigonometry that you've learned, usually through the mnemonic SOHCAHTOA. Once we have these components, we can express our vector using the components. We write a is equal to a sub x i plus a sub y j, where i here is more or less just a placeholder representing the direction of the x-axis, and j is more or less a placeholder representing the direction of the y-axis. And so when we work with components, they're primarily going to be useful because when you're given a problem, almost always that problem will be given in terms of magnitude and direction or sometimes in the components directly. And so you may be given a problem in vectors, but almost always you will be dealing with the components itself. And so you're often always going to be doing your calculations using components 
And so the most important concept here to learn is how to convert between the components and the magnitude and direction and vice versa. So if a problem expresses the original values in terms of magnitude and direction, you can find the components and start to solve your problem. And then at the end of the problem, if it asks for an answer of a magnitude or an answer of a direction, you can recover those values from the components that you've been working with. And so the formula for the magnitude of the vector is nothing but the Pythagorean theorem. In this case, it's the hypotenuse of the triangle we saw before, and so it's the square root of a sub x squared plus a sub y squared. And the direction of the vector is a familiar arc tangent formula. In this case, because theta was between our vector and the x-axis, then theta would be arc tangent of a sub y over a sub x. So let's look at this in a problem and how we would work with components. In this case, we're going to add two vectors together, a and b. And so to begin, let's go ahead and look at what this problem looks like pictorially. And so I'll draw the vector a, and I indicate its components here. And then I draw the vector b, and I place its tail on the head of a, and I draw its components as well. Then the vector a sub b is going to be the vector that goes from the tail of a to the head of b. And so I can draw a sample of that here so that you can get a sense of what that vector would look like. But let's go ahead and calculate its actual values using its components. And the way we do that is if we want to add a plus b, then we write down a in terms of its components, and we write down b in terms of its components. Then to find the components of the sum, all we have to do is work with the components individually. So that its x component is simply the, the sum of the x component of a and the x component of b, 3 plus 4. And the y component is simply the sum of the y component of a and the y component of b, negative 2 plus 1. And so you can see how we get the final vector in the end, 7i plus negative 1j. And if we go back to our picture and we look at it, that does seem about right. 